In this scene, I have two seemingly different rigs. One is the car rig, where I can move the seat part, the top part, and the bottom part with the wheels, while the rig retains its structure properly. And then I have another one, which is an accordion rig, and I have a controller here that opens and closes this accordion. And this is based on MoGraph. Both these rigs rely on the same principle, the Pythagoras theorem. To solve any problem, we need to ask the right questions. So in this particular case, I'm actually going to ask the reverse question. I have this uh, setup here, which I'm going to share with you, and it's just for illustrative purposes. And I have this cube, which is pretty elongated. It's only half a centimeter on the X and Y, and uh, quite long on the Z. Now, if I select it and rotate it, what you will see here, these projections, this one and this one, is the tip of this cube, uh, the part that rotates on the actual circumference of the circle, and the Y position of this tip, uh, represented by this null, and the X position of this tip, represented by this null over here. And as I rotate my cube around, you will see that in any case, because the radius of this circle, because we are rotating from a center, is always the same, the other two relationships change. Now, let's uh, take a step back and think of one of the most fundamental things we learned in maybe third grade, and that is simple equations. So, what I'm going to do here is go to my tools and bring up the Doodle Paint. And here's the simplest of all equations. If A equals B plus C, then we can solve for any one of the B or C. So, for example, B equals A minus C, because if the C goes on the other side, it becomes negative. Or I can say C equals a minus b. So as long as I know two of the three attributes, I can actually figure out the third one, providing I have an equation that gives me those relationships. So let's try and find what those relationships are. What you see here is a triangle. And uh, this triangle is uh, the same as this one over here, because this one and this one are equal, and this one and this one are equal, and this is the common one, so that is equal. That is clue number one. The second clue is that this triangle is always a right angled triangle. This is 90 degrees. As far as uh, right angled triangles, Pythagoras said that the sum of the squares of the right angles equals the square of the hypotenuse. This one here is the hypotenuse. So the equation we are going to solve is the following. This is called the radius, which is basically from the center of the cube all the way to the tip. This one here is the z, and this one here is the y. As far as the Pythagoras theorem goes, it says the following, that r squared equals y squared plus z squared. And this is something you don't really need to remember. All you have to do is take a screen grab of what you're looking at and print it and have it right next to your monitor. If I want to know at any given moment the position of this little point here, I know this distance and I need one more either this one or this one. And because we are going to use this rig by moving the y now, then I will set the y as the known. So we need to solve for z when we know the r and the y. So all we have to do is leave the z where it is, move the y to the other side. So I'm going to go and say r squared minus y squared equals z 
squared. And in order to get rid of this exponent, I'm going to put both these under a square root and this under a square root. And this and this go away. So now we know that z equals the square root of radius squared minus the position y squared. Now, the good thing with Cinema 4D is that we don't need to do these calculations because Expresso is going to do them for us. So let's go and set up this rig so that it complies to this rule. In order to calculate the z position of this null here, all we have to do is solve this equation. We will build it up from scratch in a new scene. I'm going to create my cube and make sure that these two sides are quite smaller. So with the cube selected in the Attributes Manager in the Object tab, make sure that this is 1 and 1 and the size is 200. You can make this size whatever you want. I just want to know that from the middle all the way to the tip is 100. Just because I want to make a circle and you can see what's going on. So let's go and create a circle. Let's go and change its orientation. Let's zoom out and make sure that it's 100 because uh, the radius is always half the diameter. Now let's add some colors so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to go to the basic and I'm going to go and close the icon settings, set the display color to automatic and let's make this nice and bright orange. And there you go. We have our main component for the scissors rig. So now let's go and create some uh, controllers and see how we're going to set this up. First of all, I'm going to create a null. I'm going to call this tip and this little tip, I'm going to make sure that it lies right at the edge of my cube. So I'm going to put it as a child of the cube, reset the transform, go to the move tool and I'm going to move it up this way so I see which one of the parameters changes and select it go to the coordinates and let's set it here on the z axis because you can see that this is the z axis of the cube. I'm going to set it to 100. Now the next thing I need to do is just release it from the cube itself. So the question becomes how do we make the cube point to this? That's very simple. Go to the cube right click go to the animation tags and set a target tag and in the target tag i'm going to drag this tip so from this point onwards wherever the tip goes that cube is going to follow so we're solving the rotation problem by using a position parameter and that's quite fantastic now the next thing i want to do is create that one null that we can control up and down so that then this tip will follow. So let's uh, create another null. I'm going to go to the Object tab and set it to be a sphere so I can see it better. I'm going to just set it up here so it's uh, not right there in the center for no good reason. And I'm going to rename it to Y. And this is going to be what's going to drive the position of this and the final equation. Let's go and set this tip to be another little sphere over here so we can see it and make it a bit smaller and let's go and add some more colorization let's set this to be green because it's uh, on the y and let's set this to be blue because it's going to be receiving the z value and the y value but the z value is the important one so what are the relationships here well the relationship is that this tip needs to be up in the Y as much as this, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. Now, to make sure that I can see all my axes nice and aligned, let me just go and reset its uh, orientation just so that I can see it this way. Now, let's go and set up uh, the first relationship. Let's right click on the tip and go to the programming tags and add an Espresso tag. Now, what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to expand this, we have a bit more room to work. I'm going to say, I'm going to get from the Y now, select it here. What do I need? I need the Y position. So let me get the Y position and put it in the output. Press Command or Control double click just to maximize it so we can see the whole parameter. Now, the other thing I want to do is take the tip 
And as far as the tip is concerned, I need to set the Y parameter, again, the Y position, to the same as this Y. Now, you'll see that now we only have this relationship, but we are getting some sort of rotation. The only thing remaining is to calculate the correct Z position so that this always lies on the circle. And we are going to use that very simple equation to find out how much the Z is in relation to the radius and the Y. Let's put the equation up here so we can see it. So let's go back to tools, let's go to the doodle, and let's write it down again. So Z equals square root of radius squared minus Y squared. How do we interpret this inside Expresso? Well, it's not all that difficult. We start from the inside and then we move to the outside. So first of all, let's create the R squared and the Y squared. The easiest way to do that is to type math and get a mathematical node. Click on it and set it to multiply. I'm going to get the position Y and multiply it by itself so I can put the Y in both inputs. This now gives us Y squared. The second thing is to take the actual radius squared. Now, you can always take uh, the cube, and I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go to the cube so that I can use the object tab to drag the size Z. And remember, we need half of the actual size. Now, I can always go and just add a number, 100, for example, but uh, let's use the cube as our reference. Get another math. Let's go and select it, and let's divide by 2. So the second input needs to be 2. Now, I'm going to get the cube, and this output will give us the division by 2. So I need to take this and square it, because we have R squared. Let's just copy this. So I'm going to press Command or Control to make a copy. And I'm going to take that half size of the cube, which is basically the radius, and I'm going to square it. Now what I need to do is go one step further and subtract this from this. So let's get another math. Let's go and change the function to subtract. And I need to subtract the squared y, so I'm putting it second, from the first. If this crossover confuses you, just take these and move them up, and the problem has been solved. Now that I've done this, this thing here is what's inside here, and I need to find its square root. And uh, that is great, because I can go to my math, I can get rid of this, and if you want to find out where everything is, go to Expresso, you go to Calculate, and somewhere down here, we have some exponent calculations, float, function, exponents. And one of these, if you go to the function, is the square root. So I'm going to take the result of these two and feed it in the square root. And that this should be equal to the z. Let's see what happens if I go to this tip. I'm going to go to the tip over here, and I'm going to go to the coordinates and get the z position. And let's press Command or Control double click and put this in here. And look, it moved ever so slightly. But now, what we've managed to do is, if I move this, then this now here uses the expresso to calculate its Z position and directly gets the Y position and therefore conforms to the circle. So now the rig works perfectly. So this is how you would translate a simple question as to how can I control the rotation of an object based on a null's Y position. If you want to add more elements to this now, you can just start creating very simple hierarchies. For example, I can get a cube, make it a child of this Y, and let me reset its uh, transform. Let's go and make it short. Excellent, and uh, I'm going to make it a bit narrower in the X. And because it's a child of the null, if I move the null, it's going to move with it. And that's absolutely fantastic. In the near future, we're going to solve more problems with equally simple math, forcing Cinema 4D to do the heavy lifting 
for us. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Please don't forget to share, like and subscribe and also ring the notification bell so you'll be the first to be notified when a new video is online. Thanks for watching. <music>